Ohm's Law and Simple Circuits. In this video, you will learn about simple circuits and you'll also learn how to apply Ohm's Law, which is a law that relates voltage, current, and resistance. Remember when you see the pause video indicator to do that and take great notes. First, let's look at a simple circuit. It's called a simple circuit not because it's necessarily simple to understand, uh, but it's the simplest circuit that can be made. In other words, you have a source such as the battery and you have a load such as a resistor. And uh, then you have conductors, wires, connecting the resistor and the battery together. And so it's the simplest circuit we can construct. In this circuit right here, the battery, we have also added a switch, and uh, so when the switch is closed here, the battery is connected to the resistor th with this top conductor, and then the resistor is connected back to the battery with this bottom conductor. Uh, we also have generators, and uh, this is our symbol for a generator. So a again, we'd have a generator connected to our resistor. We will be talking about current, and so a symbol for current is an ammeter that measures current, a particular meter. So this is a, a symbol you would see for measuring current. Sometimes we just represent current uh, with an arrow pointing uh, in the direction of current. This is a direct current or DC circuit, a direct current circuit. Uh, and we get direct current where there's a continuous flow of charge from sources like a battery. This is an alternating current circuit, an AC circuit, where the current goes back and forth and cycles. First, to understand a little bit about circuits is to understand the idea that current flows the same everywhere in a simple circuit. There's only one path. So when we separate the charge here and these electrons don't want to hang out with each other, they want to move through this conductor and the conductor allows them to move easily. But the only way these charges can move forward is if the charges in front of them move forward. And there are billions and billions and billions of uh, electrons and charges within the copper wire here. And also there are billions and billions and billions of charges within this resistor and so forth all the way back to the uh, top of the battery here. So we have charge that uh, is moving in the billions here but very slowly as they uh, inch their way forward uh, because there's charge that precedes them. So again the only way this charge can move is if charge is drawn in and once charge is drawn in, these charges can move forward, and these charges can move forward, and, and so it works all the way around. So all of this current is moving simultaneously here. Again, these can't move forward unless these move forward. So what ends up happening is this resistor is the limiting factor, because this is where the charges move the, uh, the slowest. And so this is where the work has to be done to push the charge through. Next, let's talk about the difference between what we call conventional current and what's really happening called electron flow. With our battery here, the excess negative charges are repelling uh, from each other and uh, want to escape here. And uh, those electrons are being drawn into the positive side of the battery here and chemical reactions keep separating them. Uh, so these negative charges move around the circuit and through the resistor and come back to the positive. This is what's really happening. It's called electron flow and the direction and it's the direction that electrons do flow around the circuit. The problem is we didn't discover the electrons uh, what electrons were until long after we've been playing around with electricity. And Ben Franklin uh, came up with this idea that current would flow from positive to negative. And uh, just so happens that elect it flows backwards. But we still uh, use what we call conventional current. And that is that current does, uh, we say that current flows from positive to negative, even though it doesn't. So this is what we'll be talking about. And so get used to it. 
that uh, we don't talk about the electrons flowing, we'll say that current flows from the positive or the anode of the battery through the resistor back around to the cathode of the battery, and that's called conventional uh, current. It would be nice to change this someday, but for now, we have to stick with convention. So let's talk about the work to move uh, charge. Because uh, current must flow simultaneously, how fast the charge flows, as I was mentioning before, really depends on uh, how quickly the electrons can get through this resistor that has resistance. Because this is where there's a stickiness uh, in the uh, molecules within this resistor don't want to let go of their um, uh, electrons and so they hold on to them and it takes work to strip the electrons away and move it through the resistor. The conductor gladly and easily gives one electron away and absorbs another one and passes these electrons on easily. So there's almost no work needed to move the charges through the conductors here and here. All the work is being done across this resistor right here. That's where the effort is. So now let's check out Ohm's law and uh, voltage here. Um, remember that Ohm's law is the law that's going to relate all three of our main parts of a circuit, voltage, current, and resistance. In this particular case, what we did is we kept the same resistor, we kept, this, kept the same resistance, and we increased the voltage. So that was our independent variable here, and we increased the voltage, and we saw what would happen to the current. Well, it kind of makes more sense that if you do more work per charge, then you can move more charges through the circuit. And so we can see that uh, the current will increase directly with an increase in voltage. It's a direct relationship. Now let's look at Ohm's law and resistance. So this time we're going to hold the voltage constant. That's going to be our constant. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the resistance. We're going to make the resistance greater and greater. What we see here, and it makes kind of intuitive sense, that uh, if we have big, more resistance, uh, that for a given voltage, we won't get as much current flowing. So in other words, as the resistance gets bigger and bigger, it's going to oppose current more and more, and so the current's going to get smaller and smaller. Well, that's an inverse relationship. As one thing is increasing, the other thing is decreasing. That is an inverse relationship between current and resistance when the voltage is constant. So now we're going to put both of those uh, relationships together to create one relationship, Ohm's Law. If you remember that current was directly proportional to the voltage, in other words, if the voltage increased, the current increased, that was a direct relationship. And then we had an inverse relationship between resistance and current. In other words, as this resistance got bigger and bigger, this current got smaller and smaller. So combining those two and putting them into one equation right here, we create Ohm's Law. And we can see that there are really three ways we can look at Ohm's Law if we do a little bit of algebra here. In other words, let's say I wanted to know what the voltage was in terms of current and resistance. I can start with this right here, and I can multiply both sides by R, like we've done here, and I get a new form of Ohm's Law. V equals I times R. This is probably the one that most people use because it's the linear relationship. Uh, and, but this is really the best one because it shows the dependence of current on both voltage and resistance. Voltage, in other words, doesn't depend on current uh, and resistance, but current does depend on voltage and resistance. Anyway, uh, on to resistance. If I wanted to find out what the resistance was, I can start with V equals I times R, and I can divide both sides by I to get rid of this I, like we've done right here, and we could get our third, third, third form of Ohm's Law. R is equal to V over I. So all three of these equations really are 
Ohm's law. And we use them just depending on what you're trying to find. Now that we know Ohm's law, let's go ahead and practice uh, using uh, Ohm's law. And so let's we have our simple circuit here. We have our voltage source, our battery here, that's going to create a particular amount of work per charge. We use conventional current, charge flowing from positive to negative through the resistor like this. And this is what we're trying to find out, how much current will flow. Well, we have our voltage and we have our resistance and we're trying to find current. So that being the case, I equals V over R is our equation that we'd uh, I equals something with a B and an R and that's the equation that we'd find. So we take 12 volts and divide by 4 ohms and 12 divided by 4 is 3 amperes. So uh, that's as simple as it is and uh, that's how you could use Ohm's law to find the current flowing in this circuit. And just like we found current, we can use the other two forms of Ohm's law to uh, find our unknown. In this particular example, what is the voltage if a 0.4 amp current, ampere current, flows in a simple circuit with a 120 ohm resistance? So we know the resistance and we know the current. The only thing we don't know is the voltage. So V equals something with an I and an R. And so we would use this form of the uh, Ohm's law, V equals I times R. And plugging in with the numbers and the units, we would end up 0.4 times 120 is 48 volts. And finally, if we wanted to find the resistance here, what is the resistance if a 1.5 amp current flows in a simple circuit with a 9 volt source? And so we draw our, draw our uh, circuit and we're trying to find resistance. We know current and voltage. So R equals B over I. 9 volts divided by 1.5 amps is 6 ohms. And so this is how you use the other forms of Ohm's law. Well, in this video you learned what a simple circuit is just a source and a component uh, connected by conductors and that the work that was done is done across the component and that uh, the, you can figure out the different parts of a circuit, in other words the voltage, the current, and the resistance if you use Ohm's law. I equals V over R, V equals I times R, and R equals V over I. And Scratch has a long parting thought. And also contemplate striving for continuous improvement.